الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد عباد الله حديثنا اليوم عن رجل مميز وتلميذ من تلاميذ مدرسة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي كان يمشي على الأرض وقلبه معلق بالسماء وهو بطل من أبطال الأفذاذ قصته عجيبة قصته قصة إسلامه بدايتها عجيبة ونهايتها أعجب ولد في الجاهلية ونشأ في مكة شابا جميلا سبيبا مترفا مدللا كان يلبس أحسن الثياب أفخم الثياب والحضرم من النعال فمن هذا الرجل من هذا الشاب الذي وصف بأنعم أهل مكة My brothers and my sisters Today we talk about a very unique man A man who is from the students of the madrasa and the school of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A man that was described that when he was walking upon the earth his heart was connected to the skies, reflecting regarding his Lord. This man, it's not easy to talk about him because of his story. A hero from the heroes of Islam. A man that was born in Jahiliya, a non-Muslim. And he was raised in Mecca. And he was a youth, and a very handsome youth, beautiful hair. And he came from the most noble and luxury families. A child that was well looked after, and he was pampered. An individual that was described his clothes were from the best clothes that you have ever seen. The class of his clothes. Even his attar, the attar be ajwadil utur, had the ahla makka yara yarifunahu min rihi tibihi. That's how he was described. That his attar that he used was so amazing. The smell was so amazing that the people of Mecca would know that this individual walked. He was here. Meaning he was there before and then he left. Because the fragrance of his expensive utter that he had. This individual that used to hadrami, yalbas hadrami min an nial His shoes were tailor made from hadr al mot from Yemen. So who is this man? Who is this shab that has been explained with such descriptions. Huwa Musa ibn Umair, al Qurayshi al Badri, min al Sabiqin, awwal safir lil Islam. Indeed, it is Musa ibn Umair. Musa ibn Umair al Qurayshi, from the first and foremost ones to embrace Islam. And he was the first ambassador for Islam. The first one that the messenger sent out to propagate 
the Islam. This individual, لا ينقص شيء من لذائذ الدنيا إلا يفتقد ما يوصله إلى ربه وما يمتله قلبا فارغا بإيمان الخالق. This man came short of nothing. He had everything that he desired except the only thing that was missing was that which would connect him to his Lord. The only thing that was missing, that empty heart that he had, the iman of his creator to fill it, this is the only thing that he missed. And due to who he was after Allah was because of his parents. His mother, Khunas bint Malik, كانت ملية وكثرة المال She was a woman that was extremely wealthy. She was a trader that used to trade from Yemen and Sham, Syria and those regions. Extremely rich. وكانت تحبه حبا جنبا And she loved her son with a passion. And she gave him everything that he wanted. Reflect on these descriptions of him and the relationship that he had with his mother. But there was something missing. فَلَمَّا سَمِعَ النِّدَاءَ الْوَحْدَانِيَةِ And when he heard the call, Musa ibn Umair, when he heard that call, لَمَّا سَمِعَ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَكْرَعُ الْقُرْآنِ فَدَّخْلَ فِي قَلْبِهِ شَيْءٍ فَصَدَّقَهُ وَأَسْلَمْ When he heard the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم reciting the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, then the Iman entered his heart. Iman entered his heart and he embraced. فَكَانَ يَأْتِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ سِرًّا مُخَافَةً and then he would visit the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam secretly fi dar al-arqam ibn abi arqam in the house of arqam secretly to listen to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hatta basarahu uthman ibn talha wa huwa yusalli fa akhbara ummu up until this individual Uthman ibn Talha, he saw Musa ibn Umair praying. And then he went straight and he informed his mother. He informed his mother that he prays like a Muslim. Huna bada'at marhalatun jadeedatun sayyi'atun min al-adhabi wal-nakali wal-ibtila. This is when things changed. Another level of punishment, of hardship and trials. Ummuhu wa qawmuhu ghadibu alayhi ghadban shadida. His mother and his people, they became extremely angered. Fahabisuhu wa dharabu. They imprisoned him within his own home. And they beat him. Wa akhadu minhu thiyabahu. وَوَقَفُوهُ عَنِ الطَّعَامُ وَالشَّرَابُ وَأَخَذَ مِنْهُ كُلُّ النَّعِيمًا كَانَ فِيهِ They beat him. They took his expensive clothes from him. They even stopped him from having food. حَتَّى غَيَرَ لَوْنَهُ وَضَحْفَ عَجِسْمُ Up until his color changed. And he lost weight and become very weakened. And he didn't stop there. He also loved his mother. And his mother knew this. So as a punishment, She swore that she will not eat. She will not drink. Up until, and she will not take shade. She would go out. In the extreme heat, and some narrations mention she would even faint. 
in order for him to leave the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walakin thabat. But he remained firm. A man that made hijrah to Habasha twice and to Medina. On an occasion, he returned. فَكَانَ مُشْتَاقٍ إِلَى حَبِيبِهِ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He missed his beloved Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So when he returned, he went straight to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to visit him. That is the first place. And then his mother found out. This whole story is between a mother and a son fighting for love and religion. And she did everything to turn him away. And she even said to him, Ya Aq, baladan ana fi wala tabda biya. She said, oh, you disrespectful one. You return to a city that your mother is in. And you don't start by visiting me first. فَقَالْ مَا كُنْتُ لِأَبْدَ لِأَحَدٍ قَبْلَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said, I will never begin with anybody except for the messenger, صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And then he tried to call her to Islam. فَقَالْ يَا أَمَا إِنِّي لَكِي نَاسِهٌ شَفِيقٌ Oh my mother, I am a sincere advisor to you. Someone who's caring and loving for you. فَاشْحَدِي أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولَ اللَّهُ Bear witness. Embrace Islam. There is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah alone. And the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the final messenger. And listen to what she said. لا لا أدخل في دينك I will never enter into your religion. Adin yuzra bi ra'i wa yudha'af akli. I will never enter a religion that disparages my views and weakens my intellect. Walakin ana ad'uak ila dini wa ma anta alay. And I call you to my religion. Wa ana uqeem ala dini. And I will remain on my deen. Fahiyya thabatat ala kufriha. And she remained firm upon her disbelief. And he remained firm upon his religion. And then his life changed from luxury, from bliss, from comfort to extreme poverty, difficulty and fatigue. But he did not care. Because when you do something for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, then the affair is easy. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us firm. Just as those great men were firm. وصلى الله وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. مصعب بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عن أول سفير للإسلام. فأرسله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى المدينة وأمره أن يقرع القوم. وأن يعلم أن يعلمهم الإسلام فلقبه مصعب الخير والمقري مصعب بن عمير was sent by the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم to go to Medina and to teach the people Quran and to teach them their religion teach them Islam and he was موفق he was the individual that received the title مصعب الخير the good one, the one that brings about khair, wal mukri, and he was the first one to receive that title because his kiraat al Quran and his voice was extremely beautiful. He recited the Quran very beautifully. Kanadaiyan sadiqan mukhlisan. He was a caller to Allah, a truthful one and a sincere one. Dalil, the proof of that is. مَا هُوَ إِلَّا آمٌ وَاحِدٌ 
حتى تسلم المدينة كلها إلا قليلا. It was only a year that went by, and the majority of Medina they embraced, except for a few, except for a few. ومما أسلم على يدي وهذا استوقفني كثيرا. And the ones that he embraced upon his hand. And this makes me stop and reflect. La ilaha illallah. Look at the barakah of his dawah. Look at the caliber of who embraced. Hal ta'rifuna Sa'd ibn Mu'adh wa Usaid ibn Hudayr. Do you know these individuals? Sa'd ibn Mu'adh and Usaid. Do you know who these are? Then lend me your ear. What the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about them. Sa'd. الذي اهتز أرش الرحمن له لموته سعد بن معاذ when he died the throne of Allah عز وجل shook you reflect yourself the throne of الرحمن shook because the death of this companion and as for Usaid the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said تلك الملائكة كانت تستمع لك. That the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم informed him that when he recites Quran, the angels they descend and they listen to you. They listen to you reciting the Quran. These are the people that embraced from the hands of Musa ibn Umair. من ذلك ما زال أفكر الناس. With all these great virtues, he remained to be from the most poorest of people. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and he says, نَذَرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِلَى الْمُسْعَبِ وَإِلَيْهِ إِحَابُ الْقَبْشِ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم cried, Baka, when he looked at Mus'ab ibn Umair, because he only had with him some skin, a hide, with some fur. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and said, Unzuru ila hadha rajul alladhi nawwar Allah kalbahu. Look at this man. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put nur into his heart. Laqad ra'aytu bayna abawai yaqdhiwani yaqdhiwanihi bi atyab al-ta'am al-sharab. فَدَعَاهُ هُبَّ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَى مَا تَرَوْنَ He said, verily I did see this man between his parents and they fed him and they gave him drink and water from the best of water and best of drink, the best of clothes. And then the love of Allah called him. The love of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him. And the nur came in his heart and now this is his state now. As you see him now, the day of the battle of Uhud, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dafa'a al-liwa ila Mus'ab kama kana ma'ahu yawm al-badrin wa huwa ashba' sahabati lil nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the day of the battle of Uhud, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the flag. To hold the flag to show the flag of the Muslims as he did in the battle of Badr. And the individual by the name of Ibn Qami'a al-Layfi, who was with the Kuffar in the battle, he struck his right hand and chopped his right hand off and the flag, he dropped. And then he took the flag with his left hand holding the flag of Islam and then he was struck with his left hand as well and his hand was cut and then the flag it dropped do you think that was just that that he stopped there to put up the flag of Islam the narrator he mentions then he took with no hands leaned over and took the flag and put it between his armpits and his chest to hold the flag up. Then he was struck a third time 
with the spear. And then the flood dropped and then Musab died. But I say to you, my brothers, Islam Baqi, verily the flag of Islam, Islam remains. After the sacrifice, what these noble men they did, the flag of Islam will always remain. Wallahu mutimu nurihi walau kariha al-kafirun. Allah Azza wa Jal will continue his light, even though the disbelievers they hate it. They hate it. And after the death of so many companions on that day, for what can Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the shuhada, he stood by the martyrs on that day, one other ilayhim, and he looked towards them, and then he recited the verse, Min al mu'minina rijalun sadaku ma ahadullah alayhi, fa minhum man qadha nahbahu, wa minhum man yantadir, wa ma baddalu tabdila. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood over them and said that verily there are from men from amongst the believers. They were truthful with their covenant with Allah. They were truthful. And some of them have met, meaning that they have been martyred. And others, they are waiting. And they did not change. They did not change. They remained firm and they did not change. And I'll finish off with a tremendous hadith regarding to explain the state of Musab ibn Umair where he was and we should reflect it's not a fairy tale this is something that has occurred so we can talk about Islam we can practice Islam because of these heroes Abdul Rahman ibn Awf utiya bi ta'amin wa kana sa'iman Abdul Rahman ibn Awf he was presented food and he was fasting. And look where his mindset was. Look how he reflected. He said, Qutila Musab ibn Umair wa huwa khair minni. Musab ibn Umair was martyred and he is better than me. Faquffina bi burda. That he was shrouded with a burda. A burda, a patched cloth. And he said, if we covered his head, you could see his feet. And if we covered his feet, you could see his head. He did not even have a shroud to cover him. Undur, bidaya tuhu ajiba, wa nihaya tuhu ajab. His beginning was something remarkable, and his ending was far greater. Nothing to cover him. And look how Abdul Rahman ibn Awf he thought. وَقُتِلَ حَمْزَ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّنِّي Hamza likewise was killed and he was better than me. ثُمَّ بُسِتَ لَنَا مِنَ الدُّنْيَا مَا بُسِتْ Then verily Allah then opened the world for us and gave us the riches. وَقَدْ خَشِينَ أَن تَقُونَ حَسَنَاتُنَا مُؤَجَّلَ And we fear that the good that we are doing we are receiving here in this world. He feared that he would not be in the akhirah. And he left the food and he was crying. This is how the Sahaba were. We should learn about them. The sacrifices which they did for Islam. To preserve Islam. And how we throw it away so easy. How we just neglect it so easy. And they gave their blood. They fought to bring Islam to us. Yet, we are so neglectful of our deen today. And how weak we are. And then we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, why are we in this state? I finish with the statement of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. Qal, man arada dunya adarra bil akhirah. He said, verily the one that intends this dunya. And wants this dunya, he will be harmed. In the here after. Woman Arada Lahira Adarabi Dunya. And the one that searches the hereafter, then you will be harmed in this life. Harm will reach you. And then he said, Ya Qom Fa Adaru Bil Fani Lil Baki. So O oh people, be harmed in that which will perish 
in order to receive that which is everlasting. Wa sallallahu barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.